One of my viewers asked me to take a look at the comic books based on the direct-to-video movie Marvel Rising, and just when I thought The Unstoppable Wasp was one of the worst things ever produced by Marvel Comics, Marvel Rising surpasses The Unstoppable Wasp in terms of poor quality. Now, Marvel Rising's big problem is, is that it doesn't know what type of comic book it wants to be. Your Marvel Rising doesn't know whether it wants to be a manga-style comic, a middle-grade young adult comic, or if it wants to be a classic Marvel comic. And because it doesn't know what type of comic book it wants it to be, no one knows how to execute on the concept. And with three writers working on Marvel Rising, and editors like Heather Antos and Sana Amanat working on Marvel Rising, we clearly see that there was no real vision for this concept and no real direction for how they were going to launch this comic. Because when I look at this comic, I just see a jumble of ideas, but nothing coming together cohesively. And Marvel Rising's big problems start out with just the numbering alone, because your Marvel Rising has multiple number ones that are supposed to come together into one story. Now your Marvel Rising starts out with Marvel Rising Alpha number one, then that's followed up with Marvel Rising Squirrel Girl and Ms. Marvel number one, Marvel Rising Ms. Marvel and Squirrel Girl number one, and Marvel Rising Omega. And that's something that would be very confusing for an old 40-year-old 40, old 44 man like myself, and even more confusing for the younger audience that Marvel is trying to target with this Marvel Rising comic. Now, I look at that whole numbering sequence, and it's just, again, very, very confusing for customers. And it shows how there was no real leadership as related to this whole Marvel Rising concept. And as you start reading the comic books for Marvel Rising, they really show how fundamentally dysfunctional everyone was as related to this comic book. Now, Marvel Rising opens with Squirrel Girl being the teacher of this class for computer science. And the whole concept for Marvel Rising is supposed to be all about showing girls being interested in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel, is one of the students in Squirrel Girl's class. And in the first issue, I believe they take on AIM. And then in the second issue, they take on this emulator character, who is one of, the, one of Squirrel Girl and Ms. Marvel's classmates. And in Human with the power to make video games come to life. And as I was reading these books, I was just shaking my head because this whole concept feels like something out of one of those giveaway comics I used to get and when I was in junior high school, in high school, or one of those old cereal box comic books I would get out of a box of Twinkies or a box of Tricks or one of these cereals I used to eat when I was a kid, and that they would make up this bad guy for the heroes to take on, and the bad guy would eventually be some one of these misguided people out here, or they'd just be so cartoonish it wasn't funny. And what your emulator is, is one of these so-called angry, edgy girls who feels like she doesn't belong, and she wants to use these video, bring these video games to life with the help of someone known as the King of Ohm. And I'm looking at this again, and the concept just feels so forced. It just feels so convoluted. And it feels more like propaganda and not like organic storytelling. It feels like a concept designed all about teaching girls why they should go into STEM fields, but not telling a great story featuring Marvel Comics, who use science to take on the bad guy. Because an organic storyteller, what they're going to do is they're going to tell a story 
where the Marvel heroes take on this bad guy and they use scientific concepts to defeat the bad guy. But in this story, it's like everything is about preaching, everything is about saying science is great for girls and telling them why it's great, but not showing them how to use scientific concepts to overcome the challenges in front of them. And that's the other big problem with Marvel Rising, is that the characters really don't get any challenges to overcome, and they really don't have to use their brains to overcome anything. And this is a problem I've had with many comic books that feature heroines, is that they never really give them any sort of serious challenges to overcome, nor do they tell a compelling story that makes you relate to the characters and identify with them. Because Squirrel Girl and Kamala Khan, they have paper-thin personalities, they have absolutely no voice that speaks to the reader, and they are characters that really are so flat and one-dimensional, they give you no real reason to continue reading from book to book, because each book in Marvel Rising is a chore to read, and as I'm sitting there reading each issue, the action really does not move at a fast pace, there is nothing really compelling going on, and you really have to struggle to read from page to page, and it really does not help that Marvel Rising goes from one art style in one issue to another art style, and that these art styles are so jarring that it becomes, it really does not give you an incentive to read the book. Now, the editors probably thought by changing the art styles, they could make it look like they were going from one video game environment to another, but it just leads to a very, very jarring reading experience, and one that really, again, does not give you motivation to continue reading the story. The other thing that doesn't give you incentive to continue reading the story is the way the characters are brought in, and they're not brought in in an organic fashion. Now, if you're going to introduce all of these so-called Marvel Rising Secret Warriors, you would think you would want to bring them in in an organic fashion, where each hero meets in each sequence, but halfway through one of the Marvel Rising books, we don't get the organic progression stops, and we have your Squirrel Girl calling in America Chavez, and Inferno just pops up out of nowhere, and there's no real interaction between any of these characters where we see relationships between them. They just show up, stuff happens, and they're there. And that's not a good story guide to the reader. A reader a, wants to know, where, why is this character here? You know, where is their relationship to other characters? And why I should care about those characters? And that was something that wasn't done with Marvel Rising. With Marvel Rising, everything just falls completely apart, and the structure of this story completely collapses from issue to issue, and that really, again, leads to a very, very terrible reading experience. Now, the thing that really makes the whole story completely collapse is a plot twist towards the end of, I believe, Ms. Marvel and Squirrel Girl, where the emulator is given a, a cop-out from being the villain, and the King of Poem is really revealed to be the old X-Men villain, Arcade. And I looked at that, and I, I shook my head, because this plot twist really did, just, it just made the whole story completely collapse. You built up this emulator character, and then you give her a cop-out by saying, oh, she's not really that bad, and then you introduce this bad guy, and this bad guy, it really, it doesn't really have that emotional resonance on the reader to make you say, oh, this guy is the ultimate baddie, and it just makes you just look at it and go, this is a cop-out to make this girl not look like the bad guy, and make this white guy into the bad guy everybody needs to be. And I looked at that again, and I said, if you're going to have the story about girls in STEM, then you needed to have 
a girl be the villain, and she needed to learn from her get learned from the consequences of her actions. But with this arcade plot twist, they prevent this girl from taking responsibility for her actions, being accountable for her actions, or seeing that her behavior is wrong. And I look at that message that is sent in the undertones of this story, and it's a real insult to these to readers, and it also really contradicts the whole narrative about girls in STEM. If you're going to have good girls in STEM, you have to have bad girls in STEM, and they and we have to see the consequences of their, their actions. That's something I put in my Isis series book, Isis the Beauty Myth, and Death of the Cyber Goddess. When I have the Rahima character taking on Isis and using science as a way to go after Isis, she had to deal with the consequences of her actions in both stories. I didn't make some cop-out guy to be the guy who was the ultimate bad guy and prevent the female from having to take accountability and responsibility for her actions. No, I made it where the character had to take accountability and responsibility for her actions. And with this story, I just saw every effort to try to make it where this emulator was never accountable for her actions. And that's something that I believe really weakened the story overall and prevented Marvel rising from rising to a higher level in terms of storytelling. Now, Marvel Rising, it was never a great story because, again, these writers, all three of them, could not come together with a cohesive idea. They could not execute on concept, nor could they come together to create a solid concept. And the big, really, shame about Marvel Rising is that Marvel Rising could have easily been the middle-grade comic book that Marvel could have produced in-house. Unfortunately, because Marvel's editors, Sana Aminat and Heather Antos at the time, could not lead this project, what happened was this Marvel Rising turned out to be a complete disaster of the comic. And I believe that Marvel Rising was the reason why Disney decided to outsource its middle grade comics to IDW, because they looked in house at Marvel at Marvel's editors like Sana Amanop and your Heather Antos who was working there at the time. And they looked at this Marvel Rising Cons comic and how terrible it was and how terrible these characters were. And they said to themselves, we cannot have this as our as a flagship product for our company. We can't have these people working with flagship characters like Spider Man, like the Avengers, like Black Panther and selling middle comics to middle grade kids who are in junior high school, elementary school, and high school because they just don't know how to write a balanced concept where we see Marvel's heroes being heroes, Marvel's heroes taking on their iconic bad guys, and Marvel heroes using the concepts like math or science to overcome the bad guy, because when I look at Marvel Rising, again, Marvel Rising could have been a template and a model for a middle grade comic book division for Marvel, but because Marvel's editors are so incompetent, they show Disney why they should have no faith in them, why they cannot trust them, and why they just aren't capable of producing something in-house for Disney and because they could not, did not have the leadership ability or creative ability to create something in-house, Disney had to outsource its middle grade comics to IDW. Now, I look at Marvel Rising again, and I see another attempt to try to make comics for girls and try to make comics accessible for girls, but it falls completely apart because the editors at Marvel just don't know how to tell stories as related to what are appealing to girls or how to make science appealing to girls. What they're doing with Marvel Rising is trying to be heavy-handed and saying 
girls need to go into STEM because we need more girls in STEM, but they're not showing how STEM is appealing to girls. Now, when I go out and I write stories like Isis Wrath of the Cyber Goddess and Isis the Beauty Myth and Isis Samurai Goddess and Easteen Fairy Tale, I always try to show how a girl would use science in everyday life because in things, things like I did with Isis the Beauty Myth and I talk about how cosmetics are a science, I then show a girl how she uses science every day because there is a chemistry to making cosmetics. And when I made the follow-up, Isis, Isis Wrath of the Cyber Goddess, I then showed how the scientist who worked with cosmetics turned into a mad scientist and showed how the relationship between Isis and Rahima led to them having that feud which escalated. And in the Samurai Goddess, I show how the Isis character helps this Masaka character who was working on this infusion cell battery learn how to use science, um, have the science project. And I show how that the relationship between her and looking out for her is important. But I also show, show how science, again, is used in everyday life. And in Easteen Fairy Tale, I talk about how science is used in cooking, and I also talk about the history of science as related to alchemy, which is the predecessor to chemistry. So in all of those stories, I not only tell a compelling story, but I also show readers how science is used in their everyday life, how it is applied to their everyday life. And I'm not teaching to the reader, I'm just showing them how this is used in their everyday life. And that was something that was really missing from Marvel Rising. And just like the leavening agent in a cake or bread, because those elements were not used in a way that showed how people use science every day, your Marvel Rising wound up falling flat, and it wound up becoming one of the worst comics Marvel ever produced. When I look at Marvel Rising, I see no real reason for a new reader to look at this series and see anything that would make them want to buy more Marvel comics because if you read one issue of Marvel Rising, you will see how much of a chore it is. And because it is so much of a chore to read, it doesn't give you motivation to go out here and buy more Marvel comics. And at $3.99 an issue, it just becomes an absolute it becomes an absolute pain to even think about buying, and I can think of a dozen other things to spend three ninety nine on other than Marvel Rising comics. Because for two ninety nine, you could easily get Isis Wrath of the Cyber Goddess in Kindle format, Isis Samurai Goddess for two ninety nine in in Kindle format, or you could just for the price of all of those Marvel Rising books get. Isis Samurai Goddess and Isis Wrath of the Cyber Goddess and you might have to put a little extra for it for the beauty myth and you can get three compelling stories for the same price as this whole Marvel Rising miniseries and you could and you could be entertained by, by those stories in ways that this one just doesn't do and you could see how science is done in a way that shows you how it applies to your everyday life. When I look at Marvel Rising I see the incompetence of Marvel's editors on display with this series. I see how they just can't come together to create a cohesive concept. I see how they can't come together to tell a compelling story. And I see how they can't come together to bring a group of characters together that can work together in an organic fashion. Because when I look at all the characters they brought together in Marvel Rising, they are not characters who really work well together. They really don't have good chemistry with each other, and their powers and skill sets don't complement each other in a constructive way. And that's another big problem with Marvel Rising, is that all of these ingredients, all of these elements, they just don't come together to become a story that rises to a higher level. And because they don't have all the chemistry elements to come together, this is why we get a story that just falls flat, and just doesn't give anyone a reason to go out here 
and buy that next issue or tell their friends about the next issue. And when you look at Marvel Rising, I look at a comic that is a testament to the decline of Marvel Comics because in between Marvel Rising and Unstoppable Wasp, I see two comics that show me the beginning of the end of Marvel Comics. If you want to pick up my SJS Direct books, Isis the Beauty Myth, Isis Wrath of the Cyber Goddess, and Isis Samurai Goddess and Eastine Fairy Tale, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com in the description box. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.